stock valve body of a 350 turbo headmatic. Um, the one on the right is a fully manual valve body that has been um, put together with a special kit. Also, um, you can see that there has been some machining done in this area here. Somebody has taken a mill and milled this out as per the instructions with this kit. Um, I didn't do this style body myself. <coughs> it, was, uh, it was given to me by a customer, didn't need it anymore. Um, but the instructions would have been uh, to get this milled, these two ports milled, and also uh, remove the accumulator out of the valve body here. Now if you look on the stock, this is the accumulator still. Uh, still installed. Now if you want to take this apart, this has to be clamped in a vise um, and squeezed together. There's a large spring underneath of this accumulator and then what you can do at that point is remove this C-clip after you've clamped it in a vise. Um, we're not going to do that today. I've already gone ahead and, and uh, gone through this valve body. I've, uh, the spring was actually broken in the accumulator before I took it apart. Um, so I've replaced that spring in there. Now there is a series of valves in the valve body here too. Um, I would suggest that you, uh, you go ahead and, and take them all out and put, put them in line, get a, a, uh, some rags, lay them out in the valve body as you pull the valves out and keep them in order. Uh, you'll see these holes right here. These are small pins in here that hold the valves in. And to remove those, um, what you want to do is turn the valve body upside down and just press on the valve and at that point um, those pins will come out. I'm just going to show you what I mean with the pins. If you just go ahead and press on it, you'll see the pin come out the bottom here. As you can see, the pins are sticking up there. <clears throat> then at that point, you can take those pins out, pull all the valves out, and uh, keep them in order, as I said, on a rag. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken all the valves out of the valve body to show you what's in there. Um, we're going to go through the valve orientation here. Um, what we have here is a pressure regulator valve. Um, this is the pressure regulator spring. Um, in the... Um, sleeve here we have a reverse and modulated boost valve and an intermediate boost valve. Now they're just they just sit in there. This little valve is the same on, on both ends. He just sits way down in the end here. And then this boost valve just fits into the sleeve here. Um, next we have the 2-3 shift valve. 2-3 shift valve spring. Then we have the 2-3 control boost valve and spring inside of here. There we have the small spring which pushes, on, pushes the valve back. Okay, uh, next we have the 1-2 shift valve and the 1-2 uh, uh, boost uh, control valve in the uh, sleeve. It also has a return spring in it. Um, and then next what we have is the um, manual low control valve, which is here with the spring. This is just a small plug that goes in the case. It just pushes on the spring here. And then the next valve we have is the uh, detent regulator valve and uh, valve, spree, uh, valve seat and spring. As you can see, uh, the pin just fits on the outside of the spring here. There is no, no plug. And then... Uh, it's just a little cup that the spring sits, sits on. So that's all your valves. Um, then you have your detent valve, your kick down valve, which is for like your passing gear. Um, so you just want to take that all apart, clean everything up good, clean the valve body out good, and uh, make sure there's no debris in there. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and assemble, <coughs> assemble the valve body or the uh, valve body back together. Um, to get these valves out, you may have to use some uh, needle nose pliers. Now you want to line up your uh, your sleeve where the pin goes in there, and this one it goes on the left hand side. And you just go ahead and push it in against the force of the spring. And then uh, get your pin, push on it, and it'll just drop right in there. Again, make sure you line up your, where the pin goes. Now these can be tight, so don't, don't be afraid to put a little bit of force on them. Give them a twist here and there. Now this one can be tricky because there's no plug on the end, it's just a spring. What I try to do is get my thumb in there, get it down to get the, the first part of it engaged. And then just take a screwdriver and go ahead and put your pin in. And that's the valve body. Okay, and there are differences in the separator plates also. The separator plate is a stock 350 turbo hydromatic. The middle plate is uh, a B&M shift kit that I purchased for this 350 turbo. It comes with a special separator plate. And then I showed you the manual valve body before. As you can see, there's not very many holes in that separator plate. Uh, it doesn't use any check balls at all. Where the stock and this valve body here, uh, depending what, ap what application I'm going to use, there's, uh, there's a heavy duty application I can use or a street strip application I can use in this, in this kit. Um, we're going to be using the street strip application. You only use check two check balls in, the, in that application. Where in this manual valve body, uh, there's no check balls at all. Everything is fully manual. Now I just wanted to show you something about this manual uh, valve body that we have here. Um, you can see hopefully that there's there's no valves in, in these at all. The 2-3 shift valve and the 1-2 shift valve are removed. And as you can see they've just plugged the holes. and put no valves or springs or anything in there. Now again, different applications for each kit are different, so you have to follow the instructions for every kit. Okay, I just want to show you the B&M kit that I've uh, I purchased for this 350. Um, it's part number 30262. Uh, again, it has three applications, a heavy duty or street strip. Um, now it comes with the instruction manual, the separator plate, a new O-ring for the uh, accumulator in the case, 
Um, in this application, uh, you might remember from the uh, when we started putting the case together, we put the spring in the accumulator, and I explained.